The story starts with King Acrisius of Argos, who received a warning from the Oracle of Delphi that his own grandson will kill him. Acrisius had a beautiful daughter named Danae. Fearing that the prophecy would come true, Acrisius locked his only daughter in a chamber to keep her away from all men. The chamber was dark and had no doors with only a hole on the roof. Meanwhile, Zeus, the lord of Olympus, saw from the sky the beautiful Danae and fell in love with her. Zeus transformed himself into golden rain to get into the chamber and successfully made Danae pregnant. Soon after, their child, Perseus, was born. Acrisius was shocked and furious to see Danae with a son. He then placed them in a wooden chest and set them into the wild sea. But the chest floated safely to the island of Seraphos. All went well for many years, until the island's king, Polydectus, came to fall in love with the beautiful Danae and wanted to marry her. Danae, however, repeatedly refused his offer for marriage. Polydectus thought that the presence of Perseus was keeping Danae from loving him. So Polydectus decided to find a way to get rid of Perseus. When Perseus became a man, he was tricked by Polydectus to fetch the head of Medusa, knowing very well that he is sending Perseus straight to his death. Medusa was a snake-haired gorgon whose eyes turned people into stone. Having no knowledge of this, Perseus agreed and set forth for his mission. He wandered for days trying to find Medusa's lair, the whereabouts of which were known to no man. Luckily for Perseus, he was helped by the god Hermes and the goddess Athena. Hermes gave him a sword and a pair of winged sandals, while Athena gave him a polished shield. On their advice, Perseus sought the Grey, who were supposed to give him further directions. The Grey were three old sisters who shared a single eye between them. They did not want to help Perseus, but Perseus managed to steal their eye and compel them to help them. The Grey Sisters told him about the Stygian nymphs, who knew about Medusa's whereabouts. When Perseus found the nymphs, they gave him the Cap of Darkness, which would make him invisible, and a special bag for Medusa's head. With these divine aids, he went to Medusa. He found her sleeping in a deep cave. Since he was wearing the winged sandals, he could fly around her and the magical cap made him invisible. By looking at Medusa's reflection in his polished shield, he safely approached and cut off her head with a sword. On his way back to Seraphos, Perseus saved a beautiful princess named Andromeda who was supposed to be a sacrifice to a sea monster called Cetus. The princess was chained helplessly onto the rocks, awaiting her doom. Using a sword and winged sandals, Perseus killed Cetus, and of course, married Andromeda after. Finally, arriving at Seraphos, Perseus learned that Polydectus had been abusing his mother. Furious, Perseus pulled Medusa's head out of its bag, turning the king into stone. Perseus had no more use for Medusa's head, so he gratefully gave it to Athena, who placed it in the center of her fearsome Aegis. Wanting to meet his grandfather, Perseus sailed home to Argos with Andromeda and Danae. Acrisius received him kindly, and Perseus did not hate his grandfather for all the trouble he had caused him and his mother. There, one day, Perseus took part in a sport competition. He threw a discus and accidentally hit Acrisius, killing him instantly. The old prophecy had come true, no matter how Acrisius tried to avoid it. He did not feel comfortable ruling his grandfather's kingdom after having killed him, so he and Andromeda moved away. Then Perseus founded the kingdom of Mycenae, and Perseus and Andromeda lived happily ever after.